Hey noobs, Mr. Frog here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Night Slave, The Dark Valkyrie of Depravity, a new HRPG game published by Wasabi Entertainment, the same publisher of the very enjoyable Dark Sphere that we also took a look at on this channel. Seeing as I really enjoyed that one, I was really looking forward to playing this. Now I do want to start this off by mentioning that the game will be censored by default on Steam. This can not only remove the age scenes, but also sometimes critical game features as well. You can find a link for the 18 plus patch that will restore all these features in the video details below. And once you've got that installed, you can get started with the game. The game starts with Refia, the main character, locked in a heated battle with a black dragon. Refia unfortunately loses this fight and is cursed by the dragon, who steals her powers and locks them away in several men scattered around the world. To regain her powers, Refia will have to seek out, find these men, and then sleep with them in order to regain her abilities. Rafia does not travel alone though, as she has two attendants that are DEFINITELY not inspired by any other series. Rafia can travel to different locations by traveling across the world map. The map is unfortunately a mostly linear path that will take you from dungeon to dungeon, with the occasional town in between. Sometimes the path will also branch off for a bit, but you always eventually return to the main path. As for the dungeons in Night Slave, they are a bit disappointing to be honest. There's no open area to walk around or explore while in these dungeons, and instead they are a series of battles that end with a final boss battle. Occasionally, there will be events in between these battles, such as random treasure, healing rest square, and occasionally bandits will appear that will kidnap one of your attendants and start a minigame. If one of your attendants is kidnapped, you'll have 30 seconds to rush over, grab a key, and take it over to their cell to free them. I personally found this segment basically impossible to complete in 30 seconds, as the guards will constantly be in your way, and your attacks against them will often miss and cause you to waste more time. This really isn't the worst thing in the world though, as failing to save her in time just rewards you with an H scene, so it's not really much of a loss anyway. As for the combat in Night Slave, there are two modes that you can choose to play in. For those who would like a bit of a challenge in their H game, you can play on Normal Mode, which will require you to do button press quick time events in order to perform your abilities. For those who just want to sit back and relax and enjoy the game though, you can always disable this at any time by switching to easy mode. Your regular attack is pretty useless overall, so special attacks will be the main way you deal damage. Each enemy will have an elemental weakness which you can exploit with your different special attacks. Most fights will be pretty easy overall and just involve you spamming whatever AoE attack you have that the enemies are weak against. This definitely gets a little bit repetitive and doesn't really feel like it requires much thought or strategy. If Refia runs out of mana though, there is only one way to recover it. At any time in battle, Refia can choose to remove all of her clothes to entice the enemy. This will not only award you with some mana, but also an H scene. Once you have reached the final stage of each dungeon, you will arrive at the boss's lair, where you can freely walk around and talk a bit before starting the encounter. Now before the battle starts, you will view a brief H scene where Refia will regain one of her abilities. With the boss now being useless to Refia, she does the only next obvious thing and decides to kill them with the ability she just unlocked. That basically sums up the main pattern of the game. Every single dungeon will go this way, with a couple of fights, a random encounter or two, and then a boss fight that has an H scene and a new ability. It definitely gets a little bit repetitive towards the end of the game, as you just go from place to place repeating the same tasks over and over again. I will say, on a more positive note, that the level of variety is pretty impressive, as Refia will engage in sleep with anything from everyday bandits to werewolves, Egyptian mummies, and even a failed science experiment monster. The developers definitely got creative with these levels, so it really is a shame that you only briefly see them before the boss encounter. As for the H content in Night Slave, I did find most of the scenes to be really good to be honest. The artwork and character design are both fantastic, and definitely do make up for some of the game's weak points. Scenes occur very frequently, with very little downtime in between, so if you are a fan of Refia's character design, then you will probably not be disappointed as long as you can overlook some of the more repetitive nature of the game. In the end, Night Slave is a bit of a mixed bag. Combat in dungeons, while not being the worst of any H game I've ever played, definitely leave a little bit to be desired. I think enjoyment of this one will probably hinge on how strongly you like the character design of Refia and her attendants, as the art and animation of their H scenes are done very well. With that being said, this game doesn't quite earn the Mr. Frog Mountain Dew sip of approval, but Mr. Frog doesn't quite disapprove either. If you like what you saw, feel free to check it out, but if not, you're not missing too much either. Once again, thank you to everyone for all the support, and if you'd like to see more H game content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to check out the Mr. Frog stream over on Twitch. Later, noobs.